response, right? Well, and for those that don't know me, I don't know, did I introduce myself? No. I'm Pastor Nicole. <laughs> You'll find me in the back of the church of this organizing, we're organizing everything to make your day as welcoming as possible. And that's all I have for today. I'd like it to come on. Oh, I forgot Lois has to come up. I knew there was something I forgot. We would like to all wish you a wonderful and blessed Easter. Aww. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Doesn't sound like chocolate, Lois. <laughs> she loves chocolate. Doesn't sound like chocolate. So we are going back pre-COVID days today. As uh, Pastor Nicole said, we'll be doing communion at the altar, but we'll also be passing the collection plate today. So back to a few years ago, before my time here, actually. So if our ushers would start with the plates, please. of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given immeasurable grace to each and every one of us. May our offerings reflect the grace that we have received and symbolize lives committed to the service of our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're comfortable and able, please rise and join me in singing Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and then opened us to the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words, comfort, and challenge in the reading of the Scriptures. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. May God's blessing be upon the reading and hearing of these words. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, bought spices so that they may go to anoint Jesus' father. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the lake stone? the entrance of the tomb. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out, went out from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those, who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she'd seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe him either. Later, Jesus appeared to eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Take a moment and pray with me, please. Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you. Fill my lungs with your breath, my mouth with your message so that all that I say and all that I do bring honor and glory to you, Lord, and to you alone. I ask all things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Easter is just such an incredibly joyful day. So to lighten our moods today, I thought I'd start off with some Easter riddles. What's a proper toast at Easter? Ears to a great Easter. Uh, come on, humor me. <laughs> what do you call the funniest guest at the Easter dinner? The Easter ham. <laughs> what do you call a baby who's a little too warm on Easter? A hot cross bundle of joy. All right, you need to put up with one more. One more. What did the Easter Bunny say to the carrot? Nice knowing you. <laughs> but see, isn't that what we do when we get together with our family and our friends? We may not tell crazy, silly riddles, but we have fun. We laugh. And that's what we're doing today is we're remembering, we're celebrating that Christ is risen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Christians, all of us celebrate Easter because it commemorates the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This essential event stands at the very foundation, the core of our Christian beliefs, symbolizing the promise of redemption, of eternal life, and the triumph of light over darkness. It serves as a sacred opportunity for spiritual renewal, collective worship, and joyful celebration, inspiring our hearts with an enduring message of God's boundless love and his grace for each of us. Our reading today reminds us what happened that very first Easter morning when the woman made their way to the tomb 
They had just one question on their minds. Who will roll away the stone for us? Remember, this was a very large and a very heavy stone. There was no way that these women were going to be able to do this on their own. But they wanted so bad to go and anoint their beloved Savior's body. It would be their very last act of love toward the one who showed them so much love. But how could they do this? Nowhere does it say that they even gave a thought to what about the guards who were posted at the tomb? Weren't they afraid of being arrested? Weren't they wondering why Peter and the others didn't join them? The gospel readings all record that they were worried only about the stone. But in grief, I can assure you that humans do not always think through all their decisions. They move in a spirit of love and a spirit of devotion. I'm sure we have always, or we have all been there at some point in our life. The women are shocked, to say the least, that they get there and the stone is not there. It has been moved. And more than that, the tomb is empty. Well, almost empty, except for the young man as it is written in Mark's Gospel. Now in Luke's Gospel, it says that there were two men, but all four Gospels, and this is really important, all four Gospels record the same event. But we need to understand that each Gospel writer chose to highlight different details as they explained the exact same story. Just as eyewitnesses to a, to a story, to an accident, everybody has their version of it, but it's the same story. Easter is a time of hope, a time of new life, a time of new beginnings. Easter encourages us that we have to be a little patient. If we have faith in Christ crucified, yet risen despite the cloudiness around us by the world's circumstances, nothing will overwhelm us because we know that Christ is risen. New life, hope, new beginnings. St. Teresa of Calcutta once suggested that we might be the sunshine of God's love to others. She wrote this, we wait impatiently for the paradise where God is, but we have it in our power to be in paradise with him right now. Being happy with him means to love as he loves, to help as he helps, and to give as he gives, and to serve as he serves, end quote. Christians have been referred to as Easter people, what St. Augustine meant in that Easter Sunday sermon when he taught the people this message of Easter people is simply this. Their faith is Jesus crucified and risen, and it must be lived by imitating him in our daily lives, in the way we speak, in the way we think, in the way we act, the way we carry ourselves. We are offered this new life when we are reborn. <laughs> so what does the Bible say about being reborn? Well, Jesus answered that question, and Jesus says, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again, end quote. Born again is an experience when everything you've been taught in your whole Christian life, it becomes real. And you develop a direct and a personal relationship with God. I cannot say it enough times how important it is to have that personal relationship. New beginnings. We are each given a new beginning once we are born again. You see, our sins are forgiven and we can live a, a totally different life than we had previously been living. One that is pleasing to our Lord. One that is based on a servant attitude. 
one where we put God first in our thoughts, our actions, and our words. The book of Genesis, which translate to, translates to beginnings, tells us how God created the world and everything in it. Moses, who wrote the book of Genesis, writes, he writes this book to tell us not only how and when God created the world, but how humans were created to worship him. And then we mess that up, we humans. So then God promises that in Jesus, all things are made new, and the former things have passed away. God provides us with a brand new beginning by forgiving and forgetting about our past. Hebrews 8.12 from the NIV translation says, For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. If your past trips you up, see your past the way that God does as no more, no longer determining your future. And now because of the resurrection, because Christ is risen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember how excited we are for this day. We have Christian hope. If there was no resurrection, everything would be worthless. If there was no resurrection Sunday, there certainly wouldn't be Christmas because Jesus would have just been another person born that day. What a shame I think that so much more attention is given to Christmas than to Easter. Today, my friends, is the most joyful day of the whole year. We hear that there is hope in this resurrection. Hope in Jesus is what gives us the strength to face another day. Hope in Jesus gives us the strength we need to take one step at a time when things are tough. Hope in Jesus is what we need to move forward in our life. Hope is something that we all desire in one way or another. We hope in the future for better things to come. We hope in our children's future, or even our parents' future. We hope for a life fully lived and a life lived free. I am here to tell you that hope is here, all because Christ has indeed risen. Jesus' death on that cross was brutal. But there was a means to an end. It was a terrific pain, but that led to joy. Like the pains of labor. And then there's life. And then there is that child. A joy for the future. Our joy and our hope found in our Savior, Jesus Christ. For those who have placed their eternal hope in Jesus, this day is truly a celebration. Perhaps you are unsure about your future. Maybe you wonder, maybe you doubt about what comes next in your life. Perhaps you are wanting to see more from this life than what you're experiencing. Perhaps you think God doesn't have enough room for you, or perhaps that you think that I'm a good person, that's all I need to do. Some of you may truly fear the future, but I tell you, your fears can be calmed because you have that peace that peace that only Jesus Christ can give you. My friends, the hope that found in Jesus Christ is our path to peace, to living beyond yourself, to a life lived free, with joy and no fear, because we can rest in that hope. So I ask you this question, do you want peace? Do you desire to live without fear? If so, your hope is here and it is found in Jesus. All we have to do is ask him into our life. We sometimes at Easter only focus on the cross, but I, again, I say if that tomb wasn't empty, we wouldn't have our new life, our new beginning, or our new hope. Easter is indeed about the empty tomb and so much more. It is about our risen Lord with us always, rolling away the stones and the obstacles in our lives. You know, the ones that Satan puts there to take our attention away from God. Easter is about God helping us to live our lives without fear, following our risen Savior wherever he leads us, 
and helping to usher in God's reign. Easter means there is no tomb that God cannot free us from. There is no stone that God cannot roll away. Regardless of how we got there, God doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to be free. Whatever it is that is keeping us from this new life, this hope, this new beginning, all lies in God's hands. He can take all those stones away. Let me tell you about a woman who had a special way of sharing the resurrection. Because, you know, that's what we're here for. We need to go out and tell everybody what Easter is about. But how do you do that? So this woman, um, her name is, uh, let's see, Edith Burns. And her physician actually wrote this book, Dr. S uh, Will Phillips of San Antonio. Now, Edith Byrne was an elderly widow who truly loved Jesus. And she would sit down with somebody and she'd say, hello, my name is Edith Burns. Do you believe in Easter? And if they said yes, she would say, great, tell me what you believe. And if they talked all about the Easter bunnies and the colored eggs and the uh, fun that they had looking for the eggs and the Easter baskets and what candy they would get, then she would share with them what the real meaning of Easter was. Even if you start the conversation by sharing goofy rows or jokes, but it's a conversation about Easter that we need to have. It can be hard to talk about the true meaning of Easter. I understand that. We worry that we may say the wrong thing or we may not have the answers to all the questions. And that's okay too. Many people do have a general appreciation for religious holidays and they're interested in learning why we celebrate the way that we do. We all know that one-way conversations are very difficult and can lead to a dead end. People don't want to be lectured and that's not what I'm suggesting. But I'm suggesting to share your story. Share what Jesus has done for you. Share what Christ has risen means for you. Be honest with them. If we don't share the good news of Christ is risen, who will? When you leave here today, I pray that you will indeed share the true meaning of Easter. Amen? Amen. We'll continue now with the service of Holy Communion. This isn't my table. This isn't this church's table. It is Christ's table. And because it's Christ's table, all are welcome here. At this table, you don't have to look a certain way, act a certain way, uh, behave a certain way. At this table, we receive the new bread of life. We receive and we accept the blood of the new covenant. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy word, God our Once we were no people, 
But now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to his Father. And he broke the bread and he shared it with his friends, with his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body that is given for you. When the meal was over, he took the cup. And again, the first thing Jesus always did was give thanks to his Father. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. But do this in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is coming Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor, all glory is yours, almighty Father, God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that we were taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I said earlier, we're going back to pre COVID days. So at this time, our ushers, please come forward. You will be directed to come forward. And then we will line up in front of the rail. If you would like to kneel, that is fine. If you want to remain standing, that is fine as well. You'll receive your bread, you'll do a blessing, then you'll receive your juice, I'll do a blessing. You'll return to your seats from the outer side so that the next group can come up.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this, and remember that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Go in peace.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for thee. Preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep it in your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God. Go in peace. not able to come to the railing to receive communion raise your hand
to take it away from our Lord. But our Lord loves you so much more that he gave his very life for you. Amen? Amen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah.
Hopefully this is all right. <laughs>
please stand and turn to your neighbor and offer them the peace of Christ. so beautiful. The altar will be open after service. If you would like to get a picture with family, with the background, it's beautiful. So before anyone who donated, before you take your tulips and, and run to brunch, you know, let every, if we can take some pictures after church, that would be wonderful. You might notice something different on the altar today. You might notice that this candle is lit. Most of you don't ever notice that there was a candle there. Does anyone know the name of that candle? The Christ candle is one word for it. It's also called the Paschal. Please hold. It's also called the Paschal candle. Okay? And here you have an A, the Alpha, and the Omega. And the cross on the candle is, to, is for obviously for Christ. So the, hold on, let go to my notes. I would like to think I know everything, but for those that know me, you know I don't. The Paschal candle is from the Hebrew word Pasach, which means Passover. So our cross is the Christ candle, then you have the Alpha and the Omega. There are some churchy words that you might hear, so we try and make it as less churchy as possible. Um, so that Paschal candle... Let's see, what other church of words do we have this, this uh, Easter Sunday? Eucharist. Eucharist is our communion. We're all going to be receiving communion at the rail today. Which is, used to be a pre-COVID thing. But we're going back now. We're going to get communion. It's okay. It's okay. You can do hard things. You know why you can do hard things? Because he died for us. Amen. Because he died for us and for our sins so that we can go and we can do our things. Okay, so we're all going to step out of our comfort zone today. We're all going to sing. We're all going to say our hallelujahs. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 
There's my ventriloquist. You have that. If you're joining us online today, you can do your offering at www.goodshepherdumc.com. We have on the back of our bulletin, there's also a QR code. Does anyone know what QR stands for? I'm so glad I know. <laughs> Go ahead. What does it stand for? Location, location, I don't know. <laughs> so here's what I do. Charlie, here's what I do. Say it like you mean it. Because they don't know either. <laughs> if you say it like you mean it and you know it, it's good. It means quantational, rotational. It's, uh, it means give electronically. What is it, Bonnie? Do you know? Oh, I thought I heard something back there. Quick response, I think. Quick response.
right? So the whole gist today is we're celebrating, so we're having fun, right? So when I say Christ is risen, it's hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's try it again. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. There we go. We got it now. You know, there's no better gift that you will ever receive than the gift that Jesus has given us of eternal life. And we need to show appreciation of that gift. So as we begin today's service, we need to remember that we are excited to be here. And that our music today, we have hymns that everybody knows, so I want to rock the windows and just have fun. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us open in prayer. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. This morning, may we carry the unity we share into every moment, knowing that we are one with the risen Christ. Lord, we lift our eyes to you. May we be reminded to look for the beautiful colors of promise in your word. And Lord, we lift our prayers to you, knowing that you will sustain us, keep us, and work within us always. And lastly, dear Lord, we lift our voices to you. We celebrate the greatest day in history when Jesus rose from death, defeated darkness, and bathed the world in stunning resurrection light. May we ever live to praise you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Please stand and join me in the call for worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Darkness has been vanquished. The broken light of hope has come. As the birds come together across the morning skies, Gather the people of God. As the wind whistles through the trees, sing, people of God. As the flowers turn toward the sun, pray, people of God. 